Hello friends. Now I'm 85 and a quarter. 85 years old and three months. And now I'm gonna do a review and I'm gonna do a little explanation and a little talking and also begging. So here's the boat and that has four moss and some people think as too much and I said it would be faster with one mast while to windward it would be faster but downwind it would not be and the good thing is the mast are 1.9 meter high above deck so it's like this high And it's like shine runner, not like this deep, but like a little bit. And then goes out, and here are the wheels. And, but designing a boat, you have to keep many things in your head. 1975 and 76, I was in Marta's vineyard and worked with Dick Newick, the Trimaran designer. And he said, I can give you speed, I can give you comfort, and I can give you economy. But I can only give you two of them at the same time. I can give you speed and economy, but then you don't get comfort, and so on. So, you always have to balance these things. But then, 1979 was the Fastnet race, and many, it was the biggest tragedy in the yachting history. Many, many people got killed and boats sunk and things like this. And afterward, Marcha wrote a book called Speed, you know, Seaworthiness, The Forgotten Factor. So you must also have seaworthiness. And many more things like this. And comfort and speed is the most expensive six. So, but then when people go yachting, they think, well, we must got plenty of speed. But then there is people doing like this Appalachian trail. It's in the US, it's a long walk. It's like, I don't know how long it is, but it takes like months, you know. And then the, the people go like a pilgrimage in Spain to Compostela, you know, they go there, it's like, if they go there, then they can get cured from many illnesses and things like this. And here in Sweden, we are up in the mountain, Kungsleden. But then people have much less comfort than my boat. And there's millions of people doing this every year. So, but when I get in a sailing boat, I cannot have that. And my boat is more comfort than walking the Appalachian Trail. So, what I want to more say more is like this. And, well, once more, we look at the boat. It's coming up. I see seats. Here, it was very good, it's very secure, and it's going to be under the bed too. This is sleeping a lot of sinks, and it's got a lot of water. And this plywood is it's not so good as as uh, divin cell. So here is like partial bulkheads. So even if they got a hole here. It's like a center boat trunk. Here too, and here too, and here too. So there's many possibilities to save the boat. And the plan is to put some insulation up here on the deck. And this is just a test boat. But on the other hand, the plan is to make a long test. So 
I think if I can do it maybe from Ireland and down to the ice cream in Dunedin, it will be a good thing. But I will, I'll do some stops. I'm going to stop maybe in Madeira, fill up with water, and down somewhere in here, I'm going to fill up with water. And then that's the longest part here in the Roaring Forties. But I think it's possible. At least this is what I'm going to try to do. And um, so this is a good idea. And I think it's a good idea for many people. And some people say this is just for one person. Well, it's true. The boat is 5.7 meter and 1.2 meter beam. But if you want two people, you can increase the beam by 20 centimeter and that's gonna be good enough. So now we're gonna do some begging. And uh, here, some holes written nicely. Be a supporter, donate to the x Life Canoe Cruiser on earring.com, you can find a button. And you also can see that on the YouTube description. And now I borrow the telephone. I will ask Pepe. Pepe, what do you think? You are helping me with the computer. Yeah. And Hello friends, all friends of Irvin. I'm Pepe. And I'm helping him with his computer and his website. I think you should donate to him so he can continue working with building his boat. Well, thank you, Pepe. And here in the background is Pepe's wife. Hello. I agree with him. Yes. <laughs> so now we give it back to Beppe. So thank you very much, Beppe, for this. And I hope everyone likes my idea. Thank you. Hello, frames. Here is the, the batteries. And uh, it now works. It's been a bit tricky. Here is the wedges keeping it in place. And here I can take it out. And now they're in place. And also this uh, strap holding them down. And this piece here is on top of it. So will it come out without me wanting it no highly unlikely and also like this wall here it's like a double hull for here in the living area so even if here gets a hole this prevents water coming in all the way Hello friends, this is Irwind, and now I'm older, 85 and a quarter year, 85 and three months. So now it's time for begging. And here is what I did yesterday, and it worked fine. So that's good. And now, this one I done a bit differently. I done it with the batteries on the outside. And this, the lid, not in place. So, but instead I put two screws on each one. Here and here. So, that should be okay. And I say, things are coming along. I started with this project about three months ago. 14th of April and uh, the hull is down and outside and inside is with glass fiber and here is this lockers coming up and below the bed is coming up here all the ones on the bed here is coming and here is a bulkhead is coming and I got these things for the masts.
the glass fiber mast for the VHF antennas and the mast holders are there. So I think it was a good idea to do this change. Many people got angry, but they don't really understand all the details. There's a lot of details and that takes time. And they say, if you look out for the pennies, it all will take care of themselves. The same thing with the details. If you look out for the details, do good details, the boat will take care of itself. So, but if you don't do good details, you don't have a good boat.